Okay, so now we're going to talk about the operations part of your business. I'm going to warn you it's not sexy, but this is critical to your success. Having a buttoned up process of how you operate your business will give you the freedoms you're looking for and truthfully what you deserve. This is where real real estate investors are made. In the last lesson we talked about leads. If you can generate leads, you can run an effective operation and you can monetize them on the back end. That's what this business is all about. At the end of the day, you are in the marketing and sales and operations business to run this business the right way. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the kind of very front end of your business. That is the initial conversation you have with prospective leads and prospective sellers that come to you because of your lead generation techniques, which we talked about in the last video. Now, I also gave an example in the last video of owning a retail store and customers coming in. As a retail store owner, as a restaurateur, any business, your job is to serve those customers and to serve them well. This business is no different. Real estate investing is the same. You are in the business to serve your customers. If you serve them well, it will result in an opportunity for you to generate a respectable profit. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory here. When I first started in real estate investing, uh, I had lost a couple of jobs. My wife and I were kind of all in on real estate investing and we hustled hard to make it happen. But what happened initially is I was thinking more about myself. When we started to figure out how to generate leads, we would go to a seller's house. I would literally sit in the car before I went up to knock on the door and meet with the seller and pray for me. I would say, God, please let me buy this house. My family needs this. We really need to get this. Whatever you got to do, please make it happen for us. Without any thought whatsoever of the person that I was really there to serve. I was very selfish. I learned very quickly that that is not how to buy houses. At the end of the day, you're building a relationship with sellers that you need to help them in their difficult situation. And every once in a while, if you help enough people, then there'll be some opportunity for you as well. So I learned quickly that this business is ultimately about serving others and helping them through their difficult situation. Now, to help somebody, they need to trust you. You need to build a relationship and rapport, and this is where it all begins. It all starts usually with a phone call or an email notification, which is a customer responding to your marketing efforts. Phone calls from your direct mail, responses from your internet leads, calls from your bandit signs. Uh, there's a lot of other ways you could advertise, but that is how it all begins coming into you. Now first I want to talk a little bit about the technical side. Okay, I don't advise that you use your own cell phone number on any of your marketing or certainly your home number. You need to separate your personal life from your business life. Fortunately that is very, very easy to do these days. I'll talk to you about a couple of options, okay, but you don't want to commingle your personal life and your business phone number. I promise you're going to regret that eventually when everybody in the world has your cell phone number and you can't differentiate a call from a family member from a seller lead coming in. It's not good. So let me talk about a few options. First, there's Google Voice. A lot of people use Google Voice. It's actually free, but there are significant limitations and we don't actually advise you using Google Voice, but a lot of people still do it. Let me tell you just a couple of those limitations. First is you only get one number. Okay, You can't have different numbers. We advise getting lots of different numbers ultimately to track the marketing that you're doing. One of the biggest limitations with Google Voice is you can't pre-program what you want to happen based on time of day and just let it roll or change it when somebody leaves for the day. Every time you want to change your routing, you have to kind of go back in and manually edit it. Next, I want to talk about what we use, what we've used for years, what we advise everybody to use. There are a couple of other solutions out there today but it's a system called CallRail, callrail.com. Effectively, it's around $30 for the base level account. I just looked it up here, and you get 10 phone numbers. If you use more than 10 phone numbers, you'll pay maybe two or $3 per month per phone number. It allows me to have a different phone number for my home off, well, my office for each uh, call, for each list that I use in the last lesson we talked about um, let's just say a probate lead. Well, I have a different phone number for probate leads when they call in. When they call into my office, my admin gets a whisper message that says probate lead. 
we've programmed it to kind of whisper in their ear of what the lead source is. When you're spending thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars on marketing, you ultimately need to know how your marketing is performing and CallRail does just that. It also allows you to look big, have lots of phone numbers that could get routed anywhere. I have virtual assistants in the Philippines that do a lot of our administrative duties, but they have local phone numbers for my market. So when people call off of our direct mail, certain times of the day it'll come to my admin in my office, certain times of the day, uh, which is pretty much after hours, early evening, the call will get routed to an admin in the Philippines, and then after 9 p.m. at night until about 8 a.m. in the morning, the calls are routed to a call center, all based on time of day. We can program that one time. It's a little bit of work up front. It's actually very easy, but it takes a little bit of work up front. For the most part, we've had all of our systems programmed to where our calls go for quite some time now, a year or two without actually even touching it. So CallRail is a great tool. You should check it out. It's a great way to look like a big business, be able to track your marketing effectively like a big business, but really just use a simple online tool that you can access from anywhere in the world. Now when you talk to sellers, you have three primary goals. There are three primary goals. One is you're gathering information from the seller about their situation. Why did they call you? Right? What made them decide to call you today? The second is to build, start building the rapport process. Start building that level of trust and hopefully as time goes by they'll open up with you more and more. The more you can understand their situation, the more they'll open up with you to tell you what's going on, the more you will be able to actually help them. Okay. The second uh, is uh, that building a relationship. The third goal is ultimately to schedule an appointment to go evaluate the house and see if you're able to help the person and see if you can buy it. Okay. Those are your three primary goals. I call it the first act of the play. When the customer calls us, the seller calls us, we're gathering information, we're building a relationship, and we're trying to go to the next step, which is an appointment to physically look at the house. Let's talk about answering the phone. My advice to you, if you really want this business to work well, is that you should always have your phone answered live. Always. Don't let it go to voicemail. Don't send it to some pre-recorded message. It costs a lot of money to generate leads. If you don't answer your phone, most sellers, truthfully, the most motivated, the ones that are looking for a solution right now, will continue to search for other people by calling other companies or filling out more leads online to find a solution to their problem. So it's really critical that you answer the phone live. Some people believe differently. I do not agree with that at all, okay? When an internet lead comes in, we have it send a text message to our phone as well. We actually have a separate uh, cell phone that we call the money phone. That, that phone is, no outbound calls are made from that phone. It's only a lead phone of calls that come in. Okay, and we use, again, we use call rail to route calls to that phone. Uh, but when you get an internet lead, we get a text message. We treat it just like the phone is ringing. It's critical to get on the phone with that seller immediately. So as soon as the text message hits, we pick it up and dial the number back just like the phone we're ringing, even though it's an internet list. It's going to help you a lot with your competition. Truthfully, a lot of your competition is not answering their phone live. A lot of your competition doesn't even return calls uh, quickly, sometimes hours or days, if ever. It's insane. Why would they be spending money on advertising if they don't respond to customers? But I promise you, some of your competition is doing that. It's your goal to stand out. The best leads are highly motivated. You have to move fast. As they say, the early bird gets the worm. It's your job to be the early bird, right? Now, I'd like to talk to you about a special bonus that we have for you in this section. By the way, you can find it in the ultimate Get Started Guide that we've given you. If you haven't downloaded this yet, uh, there's a link down below the video here where you can download the entire guide. Look in uh, this lesson and you're going to find this seller script right here. I know you can't see it on the screen, but we're going to go through this in just a second now. Hey guys, just a quick reminder that you can get access to all 10 of the training videos in this masterclass that we call the Ultimate Get Started in Real Estate Investing Guide and Program, as well as this awesome supplemental guide with incredibly valuable copies of our contracts, scripts, checklists, and many more by visiting us at flipner.com slash free training. That's flipner.com slash free dash training. 
two separate words there. You'll get immediate access to all 10 lessons of this powerful masterclass. I know you're watching it on YouTube right now, but that's how you get all of our downloadable checklists and all sorts of other information. You'll get immediate access to all 10 of our lessons of this powerful masterclass. You'll get this free resource guide and we'll share some other powerful content with you as well. So going over to footnerd.com slash free training, that's free dash training now to get registered. Um, we have literally used this script with tens of thousands of sellers that have contacted us over the years. Of course, we've tweaked it and improved it over time, but again, you'll find it in uh, inside of the uh, free guide that we've given you here. You're welcome to make copies and use it as much as you'd like. So I'd like to actually go over the script with you. Okay, it's very important that you be comfortable with answering the phone and gathering this information. So let's walk through the uh, top section here. First off, you want to capture where the lead source came from. So as we talked about, uh, you can gather this information usually from call rail. If it's an internet lead, you'll know what the source of the lead is. Now, one little piece of advice here is it's very important that you never sound scripted. This script is directional. It's meant for you to gather the information that you need to take it to the next level and truthfully to be able to help that seller. But you never want to actually sound scripted. So what might happen is that you're getting questions answered on uh, towards the end of the script right up front, right? You don't want to go through and say name, phone number, how many bedrooms does your house have? Like you don't want to sound robotic. It needs to be conversational. The best that we found is we asked sellers open-ended questions. What made you decide to call me today? Of course, by the way, you should get their phone number, their name and phone number up front. Oh, who am I speaking with today? Awesome, uh, ma'am. What made you decide to call us today? Right, gather their information up front. So some of the least important information on here, truthfully, is how many bedrooms and baths the house has. Most markets around the country, you can get this from, the, uh, from your local tax authority. Um, anyway, you can get this information online. Sometimes it's not correct, but what's most important is you're gathering information on their motivation. That's really what you're trying to do here. So again, let's look at the first section here. Uh, you're gathering information about the person that called you and what their contact information and of course the address that they are looking to sell. Now you'll see this little um, section here where we ask people ultimately if they're interested in a discounted offer. So we are very upfront about the fact that we are not retail buyers. So we say that we are um, a trusted home buyer and uh, we're wholesale home buyers. That means that we're not retail buyers, unlike the traditional way of selling your home, which involves putting it on the market, showing the property to multiple people, making repairs to get the property ready to sell, and waiting an average of two to three months or more to close. We offer a different solution. We offer time and convenience for a discounted sale. We pay cash, we close quickly, and we don't require you to make any repairs. We also cover most of the normal closing costs associated with closing do not require you to pay any commissions which saves you time and money. You're basically able to just walk away from the property. That is the solution that we provide. Your solution may be slightly different. That's what most investors provide. We specifically want to hear them say yes to this next question. Are you interested in a discounted offer on your property? Now here's the reality. As a real estate investor, about half of the leads that come in uh, to your network that come into you, depending on how you advertise, are really retail sellers. They're trying to avoid a realtor commission or they thought you were a realtor. There's gonna be a whole bunch of leads that you're gonna come in that they're not a motivated seller and they're really not looking for a wholesale offer. They're looking for retail. You, there's nothing you can do with those. Don't spend a ton of time trying to monetize a low equity or unmotivated lead because that is not who you're after. In the previous video I talked about 95% of the sellers out there, 95% of the houses that are sold are generally at the retail level. Some of those are going to call you. That is not your customer. You can't help them and they don't need your solution. So don't try to make that fit your business model. Okay? Let's go on to the next section of the script here. Tell me about your house. Now, rather than say number of bedrooms, how many baths does it have, how many garages, how many garage spots are there, what year was it built, 
a lot of people don't know what year their house was built. They have to think about it, so that's not really that important. What I would advise you to say is, can you tell me a little bit about your house? And in the process, they'll usually kind of tell you how many bedrooms and baths it has and some other things. Uh, you may ask if you own the property. Do you own it outright? Sometimes we ask. We don't like to ask people on the phone. We've gone back and forth with this over the years how much they want for the house. We feel like we still need to build a relationship. We still need to date a little bit before we get married here, right? So we're asking them more high-level open-ended questions. Can you tell me some more about the house? Instead of asking, what do you, do you owe any money on it or what do you want for it? We might say, are your payments current? Do you have any, are you behind on payments or anything like that? Sometimes in the process, they'll say, oh no, our house has been paid off for a long time. Okay, so kind of indirectly, you ask them about equity without directly asking them. It turns some people off because they think, well, if I tell you that, you're going to have a leg up on me when we talk about pricing. Okay, you might ask if they live at the property because sometimes they don't. Right? If, if, they're, if it's a rental property or a property that they've moved out of, you need to know that. Let's kind of go down the script here a little bit more. Uh, we ask, where are you in the process of selling? We specifically ask, have you considered listing it with a realtor? Because we want to hear them say, well, I'm thinking about doing that, but I thought I'd call you too, or I absolutely hate realtors, I'm never gonna go that route, or my house needs so much work that I could never list it with a realtor. We want to hear those pain points. That gives us information that we can use to know whether we're gonna be a fit or not. When you're asking to tell me a little bit about the house, in the process, if the seller is literally saying things like, oh, my house, it's updated, it doesn't really need anything, then that doesn't seem that there's much motivation there. They're not telling you the motivation yet. There could be that there's none there, but in the process, what you should do is ask some other questions. Wow, sounds like a really nice house. Why would you, why would you ever think about selling it? Right? Ask some questions to say, doesn't sound like you need me. Why are you calling me? Because what you really want to do, you're doing a little bit of a reverse selling technique there, is to try to get people to say, well, no, no, it needs some work. Right? Or you may say, if they say, no, it's update, we've updated the kitchen, and they start to say things like that, oh, have you updated it in the last two or three years? Sometimes people will say, well, no, it's been about, gosh, I guess it's been like 15 or 20 years since we've updated it. Right? Asking those questions gets people to start thinking and really allows them to give you more information uh, than you just saying, can you tell me about your house? Right? I hope that helps you. Towards the end of the script here, your goal, ultimately, if they're a fit, if you haven't disqualified them yet, is to set the appointment. That's the last part of the goals that we're talking about here, is actually setting the appointment. Now, we're going to talk about that more in the next video, about actually setting the appointment, but this is where you do it, right here, to try to do it before you get them off the phone. Truthfully, if you don't get that set before, you get them, uh, before they leave the call, it's very difficult sometimes to get people back on the phone if they haven't made any sort of commitment to you. So in summary, your first interaction with sellers is your opportunity to start building trust and to get a better understanding of whether you'll be able to actually even help that person. They say that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You should do your best to serve that person well and to make a good first impression. Your initial touch point with the seller is the foundation from which this from which you build your business on, from which this new relationship has started. So treat these opportunities like the gold that they are. Now in the next lesson, we're actually gonna discuss preparing for and attending the appointment and ultimately actually making the seller an offer. Hope you got some value from this. I'll see you in the next lesson. Don't forget that you can get this script inside of the ultimate guide here that you have downloaded. If you haven't downloaded, go ahead and do that now. There's a link right down below the video here. Thanks so much, I'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, just a reminder, thanks for watching this incredibly powerful masterclass lesson. I hope you got a lot out of it. Just a reminder that you can get access to all 10 of the training videos in this masterclass that we call the Ultimate Get Started in Real Estate Investing Training Program and Guide. You can get this supplemental guide which is full of valuable copies of our contracts, checklists, the scripts we use when we talk to sellers, and so much more. Quite frankly, we've never given away all this free content before, so it's super powerful. To get it, to get access to all of this, you simply need to go to flipnerd.com slash free training, and that's flipnerd.com slash free dash training to get access to everything. It's completely free, but we can't give you downloads on YouTube. You have to come over to our site to get them. You'll get immediate access, again, to all 10 lessons 
of this powerful masterclass. You get this free resource guide and we'll share some other powerful, awesome content with you as well. So go on over to flipnerd.com slash free dash training. Now you can register. See you on the other side.